Hey guys, how's it going? So uh, it's April 11th here today and um, there's been a lot of talk and a lot of debate on what tractor, what did Mike replace the 1050 with? And uh, what, is, it the, is it a versatile? Is it another new John Deere? Um, is it another Fent? Could it be a case, you know, to appease Ashton and Mike likes case too. Um, so really what is that tractor? So the tractor came here a couple days ago um, we now have it hooked up, we're ready to rock and roll. And uh, Travis is still here working on the drill with me. So I thought I would introduce the tractor to you guys and kind of show you on the progress of our drill. So drum roll, drum roll, drum roll, drum roll, and boom, there it is. It is the uh, Fent 2 track 1167. I did run this tractor, not the exact tractor, but I did run demo this tractor last summer. Um, so let's talk about it. First off is the tracks. They did widen them out. Obviously the one that I demoed had the tracks in because it's a big job to widen out these tracks, but widened out the stance. Um, and speaking of the tracks, these are the extreme version. So the extreme tracks, there's two different, uh, um, options and tracks you can get obviously these are 36 inch you can also go 30 inch if you would like and then they have a basic track or whatever they want to call it then they have the extreme track the extreme track basically just gives you a lot thicker lug okay um, on the regular track it'd be just a little thinner lug uh, these are thicker um, so and they do cost more money also we put full ballast on this tractor as maximum what we can put i do believe it weighs somewhere around that 62,000 pounds um, we've got lots of these weights stacked up on here on this front uh front bogey wheel whatever you want to call it and then some more stacked up over here um there's suitcase weight stacked all along here so the tractor that i demoed last year was about 57,000 pounds it weighed the same as our john deere two track um some weights here some more weights in here and then suitcase weight stacked down there as well now it is weighed to 62,000, but obviously mike likes his weight when it comes to pulling up the hills um, we will try it at that weight, no problem. I think that's the maximum that you're supposed to put for the roll cab. But let's be honest, Mike doesn't always play by the rules. And he could stack a whole pile more weight right here. And uh, he could pile a lot more weight all the way out to here. So I could put another 3,000 pounds on it if I wanted to. Or if I thought that I needed to. And we could bring it up to 65,000 pounds. When are you ever going to need 65,000 pounds? Well, my four track that you saw go down the road, it weighed 65,000 pounds. The four tracks, my brother's four tracks, um, were weighted up to 60,000 pounds. And I put another 5,000 pounds, 2,500 per side of that extra steel hanging on the side. And uh, when I'm going up the hills, I'm the one with the least amount of slip dragging that drill up. And my brothers are just sitting there doing some digging. Like I said, I can always put more on. Right here, there's 2,000 kgs right here on the front. Uh, toolbox. I don't know about this toolbox thing. No, I'm not going to lie. It's I still got it packed full of stuff in here, but um, I got to clean this out. But it's kind of a flimsy, it's kind of a flimsy toolbox. Kind of thought maybe get a little better one, but whatever. whatever. Um, full light package. Yes, it does run deaf. Um, Cat 5 hitch re uh, reduced down with this here reducer that you stick in here to Cat 4. Why is this electric tape on here? This is to make sure that Mike doesn't forget to uh, tighten these bolts. I had to put some new ones in down here. And I put tape there to make sure that Mike doesn't head to the field <laughs> without tightening up those bolts. Mike, why don't you do it right now? Yeah, well, I've been trying to do a lot of things right now, but uh, that's a very good question. Um, I'm not probably done hooking everything up the way I would like to. On the 1050 for the three point, they have the places you can kind of put those three point connectors and balls and so on and so forth. There's nothing like that on this one because it obviously doesn't have a three point. So we just kind of drilled a piece of angle iron on here onto the edge of this PTO adapter. This does not lift up. So it's not like, oh man, Mike, how are you supposed to lift this thing up now that you wired all this on? Uh, this is stationary. It does not move. So that is no problem. So I just kind of wired all these things on here nice and neatly, except for this guy back here because I lost his bracket. So I just did some serious farmer zip tying. <laughs> um, so yeah, it obviously has a PTO. Um, the two track obviously has 
uh, sight gauges everywhere. There's a sight gauge on this one, sight gauge on that diff, and uh, little sight gauges on all your bogies. This is for your oil. Um, there's a sight gauge. Where is it here? Right here. And I can't remember why what that one is for. I think that is for the hydraulic fan. Don't don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that's for the hydraulic fan. Is the fan reversible? No, it's not. It needs to be. It should be. Don't ask me why it is not. When you're grain carting with these things, you need to be able to blow the chaff off the front. Speaking of chaff and blowing dust off the front, there is no pre-cleaner anywhere on this puppy that I see. Like, you know, the John Deere in the case of a pre-cleaner. Uh, so that is a concern. Obviously, as you know, the 1050 on dry weather, dry conditions like what we have this spring, um, I would have to blow that air filter out at least every other day. I would plug that thing absolutely solid with dust. So in saying that, I am really concerned that this is gonna be no better. I guess, like you say, time will tell. Um, for the hydraulic reservoir, it's actually back here. Uh, it's obviously a little low. And then to fill it, uh, it's right in back here. So it's kind of a pain in the butt to fill it. Uh, I got some wires and stuff zip tied right here. This is kind of a step. So uh, there is eight remotes, four per side, four per pump. This is one pump, this is another pump. Um, these two ones, they plumb to three quarter inch hydraulic outlets. The rest of these are all half. Mike, why aren't you running three quarters on your fans? We did run three quarters on our fans, you guys. And uh, I didn't notice any difference other than it was a pain in the butt to hook and unhook the three quarter inch, especially on the case quad tracks. We had them three quarters on the case quad tracks. Then we went back to half inch on the deers because it, I got sick of doing the whole two person job trying to put your hoses back in. So, And then we've just been running half inch ever since. And to be honest, I don't think we'll go back. Obviously you can't run a two track without having a hydraulic hitch. Um, our John Deere has a hydraulic hitch. Uh, except on our John Deere, it's manual. You gotta hit your little hydraulic button, you know, kick it one way or the other. Um, this one has also has a hydraulic hitch, swinging hitch, I should say, swinging hitch. So that way it will swing it right across the drawbar. Uh, but it's auto, and you can set the sensitivity on that. So we'll go through that when we actually get to the field. So, um, so this is where your batteries are, obviously. Your uh, disconnect, it's kind of weird. Uh, to my knowledge, this thing automatically disconnects after like 20 minutes. Don't quote me on that. But I cannot find a button anywhere to actually manually disconnect it like on a combine or like on its 1050 hit that button or the 724 you hit that button inside the cab there is no button to hit but yet the batteries are disconnected uh, when I come back so I do believe it's on a timer and obviously for the engine as you know we're running the MAN engine in there it's the 16.2 liter MAN engine I do believe that's the same engine they have in their ideal 10 because I do believe our ideal 9s are 15.2 pretty sure don't quote me on that without googling it but i'm pretty sure this is the ideal 10 uh 16.2 and they're cranking 790 at that ideal 10 so uh i don't know why we stopped stopped at 670 horsepower do not know why we're not sitting at 790 horsepower but that being said that's what we have in there for an engine obviously it's the low rpm high torque just like the 1050 fuel tank capacity is 350 gallons that's uh, 150 gallons more than uh, than what's in the 1050. So here's hoping that I can go all day. And it's running a 35 gallon def tank. And shoot, I can't remember what it is in the 1050, but I do know that I have to fill both def and fuel twice a day when I'm running the 1050. If that be the case on this thing, it won't be here long. <laughs> that being said, let's hop up over here. So you can, uh, got this handrail that goes all the way around. Stand across, walk across. Why do you need to do that? I don't know, but it's pretty cool. I like it. I can go all this way on this side. Clean your mirrors maybe. I don't know. Whatever it might be. So yes, we did hook up to the drill, you guys. We are not done. We'll give you an update of what we're doing here. Let's hop inside, shall we? I guess maybe I should bring my... You can tell that this thing's still been transported because... Uh, need to pull this back there it is beauty I don't know if that's good enough but okay so basically it's the challenger cab that they put on here and they just threw in some fent options um, 
You got your buddy seat and then under here, I got really excited and I thought that there was a fridge. This is not a fridge, it's nothing but a storage compartment. Pretty disappointed about that. Ugh. So, I do believe we have a heated and cooled seat. Yes, we do, we got heated and cooled. Um, one thing I'm not a fan of is uh, being so far away. I like, uh, um, I like how it is on the 724. I feel like I have to get my binoculars to see my fuel gauge. <laughs> oh man. So I put the John Deere guidance in here. So I bought a new uh, 4640 and I threw a 6,000 receiver bubble up on the top. If you wanna take a peek at that, why as well. We're here, right there, nicely mounted up there. I think it's a Reinhardt system that kind of ties everything all in there. Don't know how it all works, but they put it all together and they tell me it works. So we'll believe them. This is for my cameras on the Borgo 1300 bushel cart and uh this is obviously my top con x35 that runs my drill this monitor will vent monitor will still run all my tractor components my hydraulics um uh my uh, per acres per hour fuel burn depth burn and so on and so forth and i can log my fields but, but this will be strictly my mapping my guidance lines so on and so forth mike why did you choose to go with the john deere guidance over the trimble vent guidance it's a really good question. Uh, I really don't like this. Uh, I really, I think the map is quite poor uh, compared to obviously John Deere guidance uh, in the Fent. It reminds me of a Pro 700 on a case tractor. And yes, I know they've gone away from that, but it's kind of a pet peeve. I never really liked those monitors. It's very similar. Uh, obviously, if you want to jump into the Gen 6, like what I have in the 724, far better superior mapping than on this one. At least in my opinion, it is. And uh, I don't like having a page through and try and find all your mapping. I just want to be able to run multiple angles, 90s, 180s, 45s, whatever it might be. And they're already on my display. And all I got to do is just basic one button, boom, my other line's that one button, boom. Now I'm going to 45. I don't want to have to set a line every time. Mike, you don't actually have to set a line every time. It's a pain in the butt on this one. That's the reason. Long story short, everything else on this farm, other than the sprayers, are running under your guidance. And if we want to share mapping, we can easily share mapping and so on and so forth. We haven't done that yet. I don't see a real need in it. If you can't see where the other guy's been seeding, you're in, probably shouldn't be seeding, period. Spraying's a little different story, but we're running Raven. That's a whole other video. Okay. Obviously, this is my switch box. This lifts my drill up and out of the ground. This is my keypad. This runs up all my different tanks. One, two, three, four. How many tanks I want to rerun at the same time, turn them off. I don't know if this is how I'm going to finalize. Like I said, we're just kind of, this is kind of the rough draft. But I do know that the corner post is kind of in my way, as you can see. So same as the John Deere 4-track, corner post is always in your way. So I need to be able to look around it when I'm going around a power pole. So I don't really want to block this off. Because it would be very easy for me to take this keypad, throw it under here, make everything all nice and dandy. <sighs> Mike, take a breath. Holy crap. <laughs> so I want this to be open because I need to be able to see. Well, Mike, why don't you lower the top con down? Because watch. Bam! That's why I don't lower the top con down, you guys. Exactly. I'm sorry about that top con. Um, so th this is where the top con needs to be so I don't smash the crap out of it. I'm going to have to take off this cell phone holder because I'm going to smash the crap out of it. And uh, I'm running out of bars. I wish there was a top bar I could go because I could fill up in here. That'd be fine. But I don't want to fill here. So there you go. Uh, wiring it in. Pretty easy to wire in a two-track. Um at least this one was. Let's take a peek at how I did it. Like I said prior, this is your batteries. Pop this puppy up. So we're rocking uh, three batteries. Don't ask me why we don't have four. Uh, but anyways, we have three batteries in here. Uh, I brought all the components in here. Tied it all up all nicely. There we go. And then uh, typically, you know, you run them underneath your cab and then so on and so forth. Uh, this cab, everything's tied up so tight under here. I'll show you why. So uh, everything under here is tied up pretty tight. Sure, you can take all this Tupperware off and that would give you a little bit of access. There's not a lot of room. And then you hit this big plastic hydraulic tank that you're sitting on. That's pretty much a dead end. You can't come under it. You have to go over it. It's really tight. So what I did was the easiest way was, uh, and don't even know how you would shuffle all that stuff underneath that cap because you only got about this much clearance. You got to go around stuff. I just ran it all along in here, tucked it all down, and then uh, popped out right there. Easy peasy. Probably took me a lot longer than it should have, but I can easily unwire it if need be if I want to start switching tractors. Guys, guys, that's pretty much it. So, uh, Mike, are you going to fire it up? Oh, we might. We'll see. 
I can't, I don't want to fire it up because I know he's under there greasing and I don't want to accidentally hit a hydraulic lever and crush him. So this is all the seed line that we've replaced. If you're wondering what the heck this blue stuff is, this was our liquid fertilizer line that's been on the drill for a couple years. Uh, we were always liquid fertilizer, oh, for 10, 15 years. Then within the last three years, we ditched all the liquid fertilizer and, uh, and said goodbye to that. That's a whole other video in itself. Obviously we put new mid row banders on. Obviously you know we put the points on, put all new seed line on. Now you can tell that we're working on all this uh, two inch seed line. So we're replacing all this. Red is fertilizer is what they say and black is seed, but to me it still should be backwards. Red should be seed because it's typically uh, the seed treat you always put on is red. It's always red. Anyways, it's a whole other story. And obviously, yep, this is all new. This is all new. And you gotta make sure that you run it so that way it's not too tight. Like this is getting a little bit tight, that's fine. Except for when all of a sudden your wing wants to dip down going over a hill and then all of a sudden you start pulling off hoses. That's not fun. So, uh, otherwise, where's Trav? Trav? Yeah. Are you alive? Oh, yeah. oh, Trav is around. What you doing? You're greasing? Yeah. <laughs> So uh, that's the last thing we got to do is grease. Um, as you can tell that we're got to go through the cart. We have some leakage of some air on some of these spouts. So we're going to change some of those. And uh, oh yeah, remember I said we broke a stud. It's kind of concerning you're breaking a stud this on one of these carts, but it is. Broke one of those puppies right off and I just pounded them out. So that's it, you guys. We're still working. The guys are still working on the other drills up at the shop. We prefer to be down on the grass. It's too congested for all of us to be up there anyways. Travis, are we missing anything? Probably. We like to do things at least twice. So, so for, for whatever reason, when we got all this, when we put the FERC kit, like cause we didn't actually have granular set up on our drills when we went back to granular. So we had to kind of invest to get all the towers put on the drill and so on and so forth. And for whatever the reason, they put all red on everything. Everything was red. It was all red. There was no black. So we were trying to put the black on, you know, so that way you can identify the seed in the fertilizer. And I don't know how many times we've done this, but we're pulling off the red hose and we're just measuring red and sticking it on when it should be black. And like, I don't know how many hoses we put on and we had to take them all back off again and put the black stuff back on because we put it all in red and guys i want to say this only happened like three times but we'd be done by now if we wouldn't have <laughs> right we'd be done by now if we weren't screwing up at least a half a dozen times we like to do everything the hard way but anyways that's pretty much it that's it in a nutshell i'm gonna let you guys go and uh hey are you are you just greasing the cart yeah. okay i'm gonna start the tractor okay let's start the tractor just before we go Oh. All right. <whistles> Only nine hours, nine and a half hours on this thing. Loading up. All right, guys. That's pretty much it in a nutshell. There we go. Still has the running lights like the 1050 does. I like them. They look awesome. And that's pretty much it in a nutshell. So. I know there's going to be a lot of questions. Why did you go with the 1167 over like a case quad track, the new John Deere, maybe you get a wheeled an R or go with a four track. Why not go with a Delta? But why did you choose the 1167? That's a really good question. Obviously the video is not complete without looking at the engine. I forgot about it. So anyways, 
to lift your hood all the way up, it will lift most of the way up so you can check your oil. But if you actually want access to your air filter, which is right here, and hopefully we don't have to do this too much, uh, you have to lift your hood all the way up. So there's where you check your oil right down in there. This is where you pop up your oil. That is your fan. Please don't stick your fingers in there or you won't have them for very long. So this little guy, uh, a wing nut, uh, holds him out. No, not me. This little sucker right here. He goes down into here. So you have to take him out in order for you to uh, lift your hood all the way. And then obviously this keeps your hood from crashing back down on your head. It's kind of handy. Okay guys, I'm going to let you go this time. Hey, uh, we're about to do our uh, stuck polls, so make sure you hop on Patreon, check it out. We do tons of different polls, lots of did you know random facts about Mike and the farm and so on and so forth. We have a lot of fun there, uh, plus a lot of behind the scenes stuff. So uh, go take a peek at that. Otherwise, I'll see you in the field. Oh, heck, I'm probably going to see you along with the field this year.